factory is is going on schedule. We've you know completed the building and are installing the equipment now. Finally, the Tesla Semi Gen 2 is set to officially go on sale. However, since that statement, Tesla has been almost completely silent about this electric truck. That's right. It's been a long time since Tesla released any footage of the semi trucks. The semi was first unveiled nearly eight years ago, and the delivery event took place almost three years ago. Even the most recent video related to the semi dates back a year. The project has been delayed for many years for various reasons. Many believe that a key factor is Elon Musk has been focused on steering Tesla toward AI technology and full self-driving. And the semi is no exception. That's going quite well, and, and that's the first step, to obviously, getting autonomous uh, trucks on the road. And that's the main reason the Tesla Semi is now expected to launch next year, rather than at the end of this year as initially planned. Elon Musk once left the public wide-eyed with his goal of producing 50,000 Semis per year, a figure many thought was meant more for a wow effect than reality. However, during the recent fourth quarter earnings call, Tesla confirmed that they currently have enough 4680 battery cells and necessary components to support full production of the line within 1.5 years, while also pushing semi-development to its maximum speed. The most striking point is that the Semi Gen 2 is said to have fully addressed three design weaknesses that were previously controversial, yet Tesla has still kept the details under wraps. On X, some followers have revealed hints about a new cabin extension and increased payload, further fueling curiosity within the community. So, what are the three design mysteries of the Semi Gen 2 that Tesla quietly resolved? Could these be the factors that allow the Semi Gen 2 to make a major breakthrough in the electric transport industry? And why is Tesla keeping silent until the very last moment? Welcome to Tesla Car World. Tesla announced at the end of last year that the Semi would go into production this year, yet the company has remained relatively quiet about this electric truck ever since. In reality, the Tesla Semi has always faced waves of skepticism. Hardly anyone believed a battery-powered truck could go 500 miles. Yet since 2017, everything the Semi has achieved has made the world rethink its assumptions. It's not about the specs or the batteries. The biggest challenge for an electric truck lies in building 750 kilowatt-hour megachargers. On top of that, the Nevada factory has yet to complete its expansion for mass production, and material shortages remain unresolved. And indeed, there are likely a host of other reasons that only Tesla truly knows. You know, we can be sure there won't be many electric trucks on the road until Tesla overcomes these barriers. But setting aside the delays, it's clear by now that the Semi is back, and it's here to disrupt the U.S. trucking industry. This is the first Class 8 electric truck powerful enough to meaningfully replace diesel trucks. Its operating costs are lower and much more efficient than traditional diesel trucks. And importantly, it has actually achieved full self-driving capability something no other Class 8 truck manufacturer has ever accomplished. Back at the Tesla Semi Factory in Nevada, last month Tesla posted a significant number of job openings related to semi production. These positions are located in Sparks, Nevada, Palo Alto, California, and Austin, Texas. On X, Tesla fans counted up to 90 new positions posted by the Tesla Semi Division, including roles for asset technicians, software engineers, and supply chain specialists. You see, this electric truck doesn't benefit from GigaPress support or the automated production used in smaller models. 70 to 80% of it is assembled by hand by skilled engineers, and the remaining portion still falls short of the manufacturer's needs. Since its launch, the number of Tesla semis has hovered around 300 units as Tesla shared, including 36 owned by PepsiCo, with no additional semis delivered since then. Only a small number have been kept at the factory for internal use and development. When Tesla first unveiled the Semi in 2017, the company positioned it as a revolutionary breakthrough with competitive pricing. $150,000 for the 300-mile range version and $180,000 for the 500-mile version, with premium Founders Series units priced at $200,000. However, these initial figures quickly became outdated due to production complexities, advancements in battery technology, and market realities. Recent analyses indicate that the current price of the Tesla Semi has undergone a significant shift, with industry observers now estimating the 500-mile version to cost between $300,000 and $415,000, an increase of 67% to 131% over the original projections. This adjustment reflects fundamental changes in Tesla's product economics, far beyond mere inflationary adjustments. 
the price change becomes particularly evident when looking at customer communications. Ryder, one of Tesla's major customers, recently disclosed in correspondence with regulators that the company had experienced significant changes in Tesla's product economics, forcing the logistics firm to reduce its planned semi-order from 42 trucks to just 18, while still honoring the original private commitment of $7.5 million. This reduction means the unit cost of the vehicles far exceeds earlier estimates. While the initial price increase may pose challenges for market adoption, it also reflects Tesla's maturation as a manufacturer. Rather than pursuing loss-leading strategies to capture market share, the company is now pricing the semi closer to its actual production cost and long-term operational value. This repricing strategy aligns with the dynamics of emerging markets, where total cost of ownership, not just the purchase price, drives fleet operators' decision-making. More importantly, in a recent close-up video posted on X, a well-known Tesla Semi observer spotted a detail that we believe relates to Tesla Semi's production progress. In his video on X, at least seven electric trucks were seen parked outside the Nevada factory, each with distinct features. Among the seven Tesla Semis observed outside the factory, four were long-range 500-mile variants, and three were standard-range 300-mile variants. At a glance, it can be hard to tell the variants apart, but by paying attention to the light shields, comparing their sizes, you can notice the differences. However, what caught our attention even more was a critical detail. At least two of the trucks have dark-colored light shields, a feature never seen before. The question is, could these actually be the sleeper cab variants that Tesla has mentioned? Typically, the white fairing is smaller on the standard version and larger on the upgraded version. However, the appearance of black fairings in some cases raises questions about whether Tesla might be expanding the cabin for a sleeper cab variant. Visually, the most noticeable update on the refreshed Tesla Semi is clearly the front end. The truck now features headlights inspired by the Model Y and Cybertruck. Personally, I always liked the original prototype's headlights. They look like expressive eyes and delivered impressive illumination. That said, the new design still looks great. The sleek light bar stretching across the front cabin gives the Semi a more modern, aerodynamic, and refined appearance. Tesla has also redesigned the front bumper and smoothed out the roofline, making the overall shape cleaner and more streamlined. What's even more impressive is that the current Semi already boasts an exceptionally low drag coefficient for a Class 8 truck, just 0.36. That's a big part of why it can accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour in about 20 seconds. With this update, the drag coefficient could drop even further, potentially reaching around 0.34. It may sound insignificant, but even a 0.02 improvement in drag can boost energy efficiency by 5 to 7 percent, adding dozens of extra miles per charge. Meanwhile, traditional diesel trucks typically see drag coefficients between 0.65 and 0.70, which makes them less efficient, louder, and slower to accelerate. With roughly half the aerodynamic drag of a conventional diesel, the Tesla Semi practically slices through the air on the highway. What do you think of the Semi's new light bar? Do you prefer the original headlights or the updated ones? Moving on to the redesigned exterior, it's not just the headlights that changed. The massive windshield from the first version has also been significantly reduced in size. That might seem counterintuitive, but it's actually a major improvement in both aerodynamics and safety. The original panorama-style glass offered a cockpit-like view but created considerable drag at high speeds due to its large surface area. In the updated version, Tesla has narrowed and curved the windshield more aggressively, helping air flow smoothly across the surface and reducing turbulence around the A-pillars. This improves the overall drag coefficient and reduces heat entering the cabin and battery pack by minimizing direct sun exposure. Tesla also announced that the refreshed Semi can handle higher payloads, allowing fleets to carry more cargo per trip. The maximum allowable gross weight, including the truck and cargo, remains at 82,000 pounds. This suggests that the semi itself has been lightened. The long-range version currently weighs about 23,000 pounds, and it's very likely that this weight reduction comes from the new battery pack design previously hinted at by Dan Priestley. It's hard to believe, without any mention of a refresh, but based on information discussed during Tesla's 2025 annual meeting and the recent the fourth quarter financial call, both Elon Musk and Tesla engineers confirmed that they plan to soon produce an electric truck version that allows drivers to stay overnight as they overcome challenges related to the megacharger. So, 
How is Tesla addressing the challenge of building the megacharger stations? We often get the question, why doesn't Tesla build the megachargers ahead of the trucks since they don't need to wait to charge? Answering this isn't easy, because outside of Tesla, all we have are speculations. Beyond the information about megacharger installation costs, which can reach up to $6 million, there's much that's unknown regarding the infrastructure, particularly related to the challenges posed by Tesla Semi's order volumes. On average, Tesla could generate nearly $30 billion per year by allowing other electric vehicle manufacturers worldwide to use the supercharger network, so the $6 million per megacharger is easily manageable. However, building megachargers requires approval from local authorities and coordination with utility companies. The process is time-consuming and labor-intensive, even when the installation system is prioritized. A prime example is PepsiCo, which has spent nearly two years developing megacharger infrastructure at its Sacramento facility, with around four stations. They have also committed to reducing greenhouse gas emissions and decreasing reliance on the grid. This ensures they can meet the growing demand for electricity and battery charging, while facilitating future adoption of electric vehicles and renewable energy. Turning back to the interesting details about the electric truck, if Tesla is indeed developing the cabin for a new variant, potentially including a sleeper or other amenities, redesigning and reconfiguring the cabin is something the manufacturer can accomplish. This could involve shifting the driver's seat to the left instead of the center, reorganizing the control area by removing the dual screens and other functions to focus on a more spacious layout. Naturally, engineers would also extend the cabin rearward to allocate space more efficiently than the current design allows. Beyond the predictable aspects, there are still many unanswered questions, such as how Tesla will address weight issues after adding a sleeper, and whether the battery range will decrease with the new variant. Prices could even reach $400,000, or $500,000. All of this is hard to predict, as even with the current day cab line, the information available to us remains limited. What do you think about the Tesla Semi if they fully redesign the cabin? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Beyond the refresh itself, the bigger question most people are asking is whether the Tesla Semi is truly waiting for 4680 batteries in large enough quantities. Another notable upgrade involves the battery system for Tesla's heavy-duty truck. Tesla has confirmed that the Semi will move to the 4680 cell format when it enters production, the same type planned for the upcoming CyberCab, which is expected to begin production in April 2026. Tesla is preparing to equip the next-generation Semi with its most powerful and advanced battery technology yet, the HV Pack also known as the 4680 cell. The term HV stands for high voltage and And in this case, it's more than just a technical label. It represents a major leap forward in battery technology. The 4680 cells deliver an impressive energy density of up to 290 watt hour per kilogram while significantly lowering manufacturing costs thanks to their breakthrough structural design. Although Dan Priestley confirmed that the second-generation Tesla Semi will use a smaller battery pack, that doesn't mean it will sacrifice performance. In fact, with up to a 7% improvement in aerodynamic efficiency, the truck can maintain its remarkable driving range while becoming lighter, more efficient, and easier to operate, offering a win-win for both Tesla and its customers. Experts have long predicted that the Semi would eventually switch to the 46 to 80 cell format, and the move makes perfect sense. A battery once considered the secret weapon of the Cybertruck now powers the Semi, delivering exceptional strength, high performance, and industry-leading cost efficiency. Additionally, producing the 46 to 80 cells directly at Gigafactory Nevada allows Tesla to maintain full control over its supply chain, reduce assembly time, and streamline integration. The improvements don't stop there. Tesla says the new Semi's energy consumption has been lowered to 1.7 kilowatt hour per mile, a 15% improvement compared to the current model. Combined with a 500 mile range, this update makes the new generation Semi even more competitive against offerings from Daimler and Volvo. The drivetrain still delivers 800 kilowatts of power, but Tesla notes that internal upgrades, including cooling, software enhancements, and improved thermal routing. Many critics claim that everything revolves around the batteries. Without additional cells, especially their proprietary 4680 cells, Tesla likely cannot ramp up production, meaning everything will remain at a standstill until 4680 battery production progresses. Also, during the fourth quarter call, 
a question was raised to Tesla leadership about what the barrier is to ramping 4680 cells to millions per week. In their brief response, Tesla pointed out that the 4680 isn't just a larger diameter cell. It also incorporates technological innovations across the entire cell and its internal manufacturing process. Additionally, the advisory board noted that the 4680 cells are certainly not exclusive to the Cybertruck and will be used in future models. Tesla stated on the call that they have begun the next phase of expansion at Giga Nevada, including the Tesla Semi and other projects. The other projects could be related to increasing 4680 cell production in the region. If accurate, the Giga Nevada expansion is expected to be a $3.6 billion project, adding 4 million square feet of production space. Two new facilities are under construction, one for semi-production and one for 4680 cell manufacturing. In summary, the issues related to 4680 cell production seem to be lagging behind and have minimal impact on the Tesla semi-electric truck fleet's launch timeline. Currently, the manufacturer is targeting 5 gigawatt hour per year per production line, with eight lines expected to be operational by the end of this year. Elon Musk can expand the Nevada area production facility at any time if needed. We believe that once Cybertruck production with 4680 batteries is fully ramped and stabilized, any surplus 4680 cells will be redirected to the semi and other models. At present, there are at least two reasons for the limited number of semis. Either the number of megachargers is still too low, or the vehicle refresh is underway, so Tesla is not rushing to reveal details about this truck. So what's your opinion on the current price of the Tesla Semi compared to its long-term operational benefits and energy savings? Subscribe now so you don't miss the next breaking Tesla update. It's coming in just two days. Thanks for watching our video. Subscribe now so you don't miss the next breaking Tesla update. It's coming in just two days. If you want to explore more exciting information about Tesla EV or Tesla Bot, don't forget to hit the like button and share this video. Also, make sure to subscribe to Tesla Car World and turn on notifications so you never miss our latest videos. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Goodbye.